first off a week to get your head sorted for this important game lose this year out of the championship yeah it's the massive challenge you, you heard uh, Seamus McAdaney last week the minute the defeat uh, was realized against Dublin front and center he said we're going to turn this around that is the challenge I could throw loads of numbers at you Michael but suffice to say only one team has been able to complete this six-day turnaround I'm not so sure me they're so special trend final for a finish yeah Michael the thing about it is I know Kevin says it's a six-day turnaround it's actually no team has done a six-day turnaround Dublin's was seven-day turnaround so that extra day you know and this is made me than yeah. downer trying to make history today so it was the last time time for it but Listen, Dublin, if you take the Dublin defence, the zonal defence, I mean, the way they play, they're probably one of the strongest defences in the country, the way they say. Like, Leash's defence not be as good. Now, the young lads that played well against Kildare didn't really get going. Yeah, they were both they were taken off, taken off on that match, with you them, know. Though, which is yeah, good. which is good that, that they cover well. Mm. And, you know, they'll. Dublin could have beaten them and maybe beaten them well if Dublin took, maybe finished, take better chances at the end. I think, from Meath's point of view, the start will be very important. There's a strong breeze blowing out here and it'd be maybe important enough that they won the toss and mm. play with the breeze mm. in the first half so a lot of things like that will make a difference I don't think it's a bearing on it the fact they did do well I don't I think there's maybe too much been said about the whole thing I mean most, the teams that, that you know this weekend are, they'll be out next weekend again the winners this weekend so it doesn't really make that big a difference except eventually and that one is kicked truly and over the bar nice handy one for Brian Farrell to get players the referee looks on and decides in the end it's got to be a free to leash Quigley kicking it, very, very long indeed. They just about hold on to it there. It's Colm Kelly. Fouled the first ball when he was deemed to have handled it on the ground. That's better. Back to Clancy. Looking to put the what? sides on term. He's done it. Good kick by Porrick Clancy. 32-year-old playing in his 50th championship match here in O'Connor Park. Took the pass outside. That was a fair old kick from 35 to 40 metres out. It's in the championship this season so far. It's a fair old distance out from the point of kicking this to the goal a good 50 metres and that one has travelled beautifully over no mistake whatsoever very good finishing in the opening three attacks then and it is uh, two points to one leash leading yeah First very time. good score again by Ross Mundley uh, we will take it down well here by Brian Mead into the centre it's Graham Riley who sets off Good solo drive through the centre here. Kevin Meany trying to cut him off with the pass. Comes out here as far as Alan Ford onto his left. Little block on it. Goes towards Sheridan. Got 2 2 in the team's last med here two years ago. This is on towards Mickey Burke. And Mickey Burke puts it over the bar. Only his third ever championship point. And Mickey Burke back at the ground where he suffered a leg fracture when the teams met here two years ago. So overcoming a kind of a psychological barrier as well for him coming back here. And he's done it with a free kick. Ready to take on his man who's Kerr Healy. Co-keeper comes. I think he might have had an eye on the forward coming in as well. Did well to get away with that. And it comes out as far as Billy Sheehan. Driving forward here is Gary Walsh. Started the day at full forward. Back in towards Sheehan it comes. Has Monolly available to strike it from a distance. And it carries beautifully over. It's a lovely score by Ross Monolly. Well, great work by the 29-year-old from Arles Kill Cruz here. That's the 45-meter line out there. Wind supported, he puts it over. And it's intercepted by Clancy. But it still comes back to Mickey Burke. And Brian Mead, as his colleagues tried to play into the wind and have to carry it forward. No point in just booting it haphazardly because the wind will get it. It will be misdirected, so they work it in measured fashion. And it's Graham Riley who kicks it over the bar. His first point. Teams are level once again here. Level for the third time in O'Connor Park. That was patient, that was deliberate, and that was excellent by Mead. Graham Riley's first score. And with pass and the lazy one at that and straight to Quigley. Who got the final touch there? McInerney felt it was off the leash man, but the uh, linesman on this side, who is Rory Hickey from Clare, thought otherwise. Colin Begley now setting leash away. This is Darren Strong. Living up to his name and booting that one from a huge distance out. And he puts it over the bar, his third point of this year's championship. And it is Leash who lead again by four points to three. Oh, that's some fantastic football. In fact, the Leash half back line look really good. Darren Strong, John O'Loughlin is covering when, when Mead attack, and Connor Boyle got the goal the last day. They can score from, from the half back line.
right in the space of a week. 18 wides is an enormous amount. Is it a mental thing? Is it technical inability in front of goal? Is it a lack of confidence? That's Quigley hitting it. And that one's got all the way over. Nothing wrong with his, Quigley, his uh, confidence. Brendan Quigley over David Gallagher's crossbar. Should David Gallagher have come out here a moment earlier? No. Difficult even when you look from there. Very hard to judge uh, that wind. I suppose that the manager would be happy if they're creating the chances once they're not shooting from stupid. Cleverly worked down here. Billy Sheehan. And the Kerry native crosses the Meath 45 meter line. Beautiful free transferred here of Connor. And the final shot has gone over the bar. And it's Damien O'Connor from Timahoe. A move was started by a Timahoe player, the goalkeeper Owen Culleton, and finished. Difficult one for Connor Boyle to hold on to, but he did. Very assured player, Boyle. One of those uh, students of the leash team, he goes to Carlo IT. Retained here by Peter O'Leary. Held on to by Rob Strong. Or Darren Strong, rather. And a big kick at the end of that produces another fine point. Really good score for Ross Monnelly, and he's got a third. Seven points to three, four ahead. And Meath haven't scored now since the eighth minute of this match, so ten and a half minutes ago. Yeah, and Ross Monnelly is their go-to man. If you can only get him, it's hard to hold on to your place. Once again, it is the man who got the opening point, Brian Farrell, who takes this. One man to aim at up there. Forrick Clancy's did well with his first point attempt. This one drops short. I'm surprised they haven't more players up there in support of him. My goodness, what's happening here? The goalkeeper has conceded a penalty. Out of nothing, Leash have themselves an opportunity of getting the opening goal of this game, and all because of this here. Lost it in the challenge, and then pulled the leg of Colum Kelly. Oh, we'll have nightmares over that, I think, uh, David Gallagher. And he's got a yellow card as well for his troubles. I think it's his second nightmare this year, Joe, unfortunately, uh, for David Gallagher. I think it was in this ground, actually, that uh, the last for, against Carlo, that Carlo got a goal as well. Yeah, it was. Penalty for Leash. 26 minutes into the game. And the referee is telling Owen Harrington to go off until such time as he's ready to call him on. So an extra few seconds now for Ross Monnelly to compose himself here, looking for his sixth ever championship goal. This is important for Leash, and he's got it. No mistake. He may have been booked a few moments ago, but after 26 minutes, with that penalty goal, he's given Leash an emphatic lead of 1-7 to 4 points. And now Owen Harrington can come on for Donald Keoghan. Yeah, very important goal for Leash. Numbers there. Here's Kerr Healy once again. He's been a very good hurler in his uh, days with the hurling team as well. This comes out once again to Peter O'Leary. Making a lot of ground in towards Colin Begley. Begley soloing, looking for somebody to dish it off to. It's Colin Kelly kicking and kicking well. Good point. First of the match for him. And everyone on the inside forward line starting out today for Leash has got a score here. And they've got a lead now of 1 8 to 4 points. Yeah, very well measured score. Dry bullet kicker, he just might be able to make it. It's an important one. Would be Meade's fifth point. Yes, it will give them a little bit more hope. Deal with here. Rain lashing into his face. But he has the breeze behind him if he catches it well. Got a point from play a few moments ago. So Kelly from Stradbally lets it up and lets it over. Great kick. McHugh with me here in the studio. Uh, Kevin Leash started with the breeze, started with the best play, uh, had the lead on the scoreboard pretty much as they would have hoped for. Yeah, they're in a good, a good position, seven points up. Uh, breeze is strong. Yeah, that, that, that it's a central part of the game now. Uh, but Although it does seem to have died over yeah, the last the, 10 the minutes. Yeah, the rain, so the rain dampens, has changed tends that. to dampen it down a bit. 
The uh, meat forward line, we, we, we're, we've Riley really penciled in at midfield, haven't scored from play at all. That's a concern, it has to be a concern. And some of them just not playing particularly well. So, Leash are this in is, a. Uh, this is what they would have feared from last week. They were saying absolutely. it won't make any difference. Uh, but of does. course it does. Yeah, now, can they shake it out at half time? Perhaps they can, because they will have the, the, the wind, whatever is, is going to be in it in the second half. They're, they're in a tough place now, Mead, and they have to really uh, lash out uh, for the last 35 minutes. Are they going to be out of the championship? You were talking to me, Martin, about the the physicality, if you like, that Justin McNulty has brought to this Leash team, and obviously his background in Armagh football. Now they have had, they've had five players booked here. Uh, Mead have two, seven players booked. You're not guaranteed to finish with 30 players yeah. here. And you know what's very interesting about the Leash thing? Them five players, only one defender booked, one midfielder booked, and three forwards. The modern day football, Michael, will tell you that forwards are allowed to tackle harder than defenders now because yeah. defenders give away scores. So definitely Leash are putting in, putting in big hits, particularly up front. We saw the instance for the penalty where it's a forward tackling goalkeeper. You had the instance on Don Donald Kyogen, the corner back. And, you know, Leash, I think tactically, me, they're not big into tactics. They like to go out and play, play just, you know, orthodox football, but they're th leaving Mickey Burke loose where. where Damien O'Connor is roaming out the field, and that's leaving Mickey Burke loose. And me, they're not coping well with that. And John O'Loughlin sitting in defence, and Leash are running at them mm. and causing them a lot of problems. But I'd say me, were planning for Leash, especially with the one kicked the long high ball, and, and they've changed their style of football and causing, causing a lot of problems. All right, lads, uh, so the Billy Sheehan driving forward here. It's going to be interesting to see exactly where they opt to play him. Freeze against them. Maybe it's lessened a little bit in its intensity. Again, it's worked forward. Oh, that was Billy Sheehan coming on to it, and he's got a point. He's put it over the bar. He might well have got himself a goal there. Look at the movement again. Keeper to beat. Team beaten six days ago. If they're going to stay in the hunt for the championship. Leash of other ideas, and these two county teams have given us some great battles in the past. And that time it's Billy Sheehan held onto the ball, ball almost beaten out of him. Quigley taking the free kick. Gary Walsh recovered. Played back smartly to Russ Mullally, who got a goal from a penalty, and now he has added to his halftime tally of 1-3, and he's got a fourth point. And it's a very, very smart start to the second half by Leash. This is the start I was anticipating from me. Absolutely, it's the dream start for Leash. Clancy for Leash, this great warrior of this Leash team. And he's got uh, another one from them off the post and over the bar. Three in a row for Leash. And they might have had a goal among those three scores. Instead, it's 112 to five points. A fantastic goal. Just the start they wanted, driving at the meat defence. If they didn't score, they'd have had to fall in because it was 2 on 1 on the inside. Great intensity to win the ball back from Meath as well initially. Correct in that earlier on, John. Stephen Bray about to hit this one, trying to go around the corner with the kick. And that is one back for Meath. And this is going to be kicked back in here once again by Stephen Bray. He's got all the way back, the tourist route. Having a go here is Damien is, uh, Owen Harrington. And Harrington puts it over the bar, doesn't score too many points. Well, that's one. And that's two in a row now for me. And this is how they went about it. Took on an ambitious kick here. Big, huge drive from Harrington and over the bar. Point number four here from Freeze. Not going to miss one as easy. Win supported. Four points in the match so far. Leaving it up, hitting it, and guiding it over beautifully. Brian Mead now. Big one in, it's knocked down, here's the chance! Oh, it was there for Jamie Queenie. And every Meath man, woman and child here thought he was going to do it again. This was his angle. Neatly in here, as far as Paul Cahalan. And Cahalan dances over the challenges, holds it, looks for a support player. And that is kicked off an angle and kicked over the bar quite brilliantly. That is a fantastic score against the wind on the outside of his foot. Really skillful thing to do. Normally the ball slices off the outside of your foot, but he's some footballer. Still continuing to pull forward here. Looking for a miracle at this stage. Farrell played off. There's a return. And that's one back. Helped in there well by Pat O'Byrne. Got a goal against Kildare. He's got another one here. Is it too late? 
there is still some two minutes left past stoppage time and there's only a goal between the teams at 115 to 112 Mead know exactly what they've got to do Stephen Bray taking it short now he can lob it in and they can go into the square as soon as he kicks it and he's put that one wide and another one has gone a begging oh if you had about four options he took the wrong one absolutely that ball should have been right in the square we're into the last 10 seconds but that's at least 10 seconds and the referee could add on a little bit more and the referee blows his final whistle decides there is no further time and it's leash who beat me Caderburn got the goal very late in the match for me but it wasn't enough and here at O'Connor Park in Tullamore, it's Leash the winners. Leash won 15, Meath one goal and 12. The bottom line is we give away too much ball at times and we created opportunities and didn't take them and we conceded some handy scores the other end. But listen, uh, I couldn't have a bad word to say about the lads. They're, they're battling qualities. The one thing for certain sure here is that there's battling qualities back in this Mead team. Uh, we've introduced nine debutants over the last two years. They've played exceptionally well. We've played six championship matches in 2012 and that's great for Mead football. The thing I, I, I'm most satisfied with is the performance of my team. You know, they, they were very, very hungry, very, very disciplined, and really, really wanted to win that battle today, and that was demonstrated in their performance. And uh, yeah, the adventure is over for the moment, anyway, for Seamus McEnany. Joe Bradley, Leash have always produced nice footballers, but one thing that we were remarking on is Justin McNulty, their manager there, certainly seems to have brought a, a, a physical element to their game as well since he's come in. Well, Justin would be one of the sort of DCU brigade who would have a very clear understanding of modern fitness requirements and all of that. So you can see in the physiques of the Leash players. But I think that the problem for them is that they, they beat a Meath team that doesn't have an arse in its trousers. What I mean by that is a team that hasn't had a consistent period of form where they've built up, you know, stability and all of that. And this was difficult for them after six days mm. and of course now Leash have to very quickly adjust their expectations to the real big time against the Dubs next Saturday and the Dubs who've been flat of late in Leinster will want to put on a show at this stage and uh, I mean it's a very very difficult fixture for them but they certainly they deservedly beat me given the limitations of that <coughs> fixture from me's perspective you know it was a big big ask it was. I mean, we were talking about that last uh, evening down there, Pat, this, this weak turnaround for me. There was also another aspect to it, which we were discussing, is the lads were saying before the match, whoever gets the breeze will have a big advantage because it was quite strong down there. Leash got the breeze and they decided to start pelting over points they did. And from one all of the, angles. You know, one of the things that are sadly lacking in GA players and in GA inter-county management is common sense. And common sense dictates if you're playing with the strong wind, you let the ball do the work. That's number one. And if there's a blanket defence, you kick the ball over. And in the first half, that's exactly what Leash did. They kicked the ball, they used the wind, and they kicked the ball over the blanket defence. Brilliant point here from, from Ross Munley. What you might look clearly is there's four meat players in the blanket, but they're serving absolutely no...